Could being an underdog actually be your unfair advantage, your superpower? With all the opportunities that exist today, why haven't you reached your next level of income, life, and wealth? In most cases, we've been lied to. We've been told that if you find the right opportunity and you work hard, you can be successful. And that's simply not true. Millionaires, billionaires, and successful people have realized you need the foundation for wealth, the habits. And that's exactly what you'll be learning on the Millionaire Success Habits Podcast. All success starts here. Hey, it's Dean, and I am getting ready to go to the beach with my kids, but I had a message for you that I think is so important for this podcast. If you want millionaire success habits, you just want habits to become successful, become a bigger version of you, then we need to set the foundation. That's where all success starts. But here's something that plagues so many of us. We feel, and in some cases, we really are the underdog. We weren't born in the same area, the right area, I should say. We weren't born with money. Maybe we didn't go to the right college. Maybe you're small, maybe you're tall, maybe you're overweight, maybe you're too thin. Maybe you don't have a spouse that supports you. Maybe you live in a tough country. Maybe you live in our current economy that's really tough, uh, in your head at least, or, or, or whatever. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. What I'm saying, you know, saying is, it doesn't matter where you come from. Most people I talk to feel that they're an underdog. I have someone in my family that's really close and he said, Dean, I'm an underdog because my parents were so good. They loved me so much. My childhood was so easy. I really don't have a drive to go out and get more. I mean, I want more. I, I want the success. I want to make the money. I want that next level, but uh, I'm kind of happy. Here's someone who's complaining he's an underdog because things went too good. And then there's those of you listening right now that know Deep down, you really are the underdog. But how about this? What if today was the last day you ever thought or ever you looked, you ever looked at an underdog in a negative way? In fact, you were proud of it. In fact, you want to wear a t-shirt that says, I'm an underdog. Because listen, here's what I know. The underdog story is the greatest story in, in humankind. I mean, in, in, human, in, in human nature, the underdog story, it lights us up. It's why you like underdog story movies. So why not make your own life an underdog movie? where the underdog comes back, where the underdog wins. Because here's what I know. As an underdog, you got something to prove. Underdogs get told all the time, success is out there, but not for you. Success can work, but I don't think it can work for you. People look at you and go, oh, he's a dreamer. She's biting off more than she could chew. Why isn't she just settled? She's going to fail bad. Oh my God, did you see what he's trying now? He's trying this online business. Oh, he's trying to make money in Amazon. No, 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 better yet. Do you believe he's trying to make money in real estate? They're laughing behind your back. Not in all cases, but in some cases, they're making fun of you behind your back. They're saying that it'll never work for you. So you get told you can't. Okay, you can do two things with that. You could feel like an underdog. You can let those words sink into your soul and go, wow, I guess I can't. Maybe I'm too short. Maybe I am not rich enough. Maybe I didn't go to the right school. Maybe I'm in the wrong town. Maybe, maybe I don't have the degrees. Or you could be like, screw them. The hell with them. I'm going to show them what I made. Let them tell me. You can use their words as your fire, as your fuel, as your rocket fuel or nitrous oxide. You could say, they said I can't. Watch when I do. Underdogs get told all the time that they're a dreamer. So, when you feel like when someone tells you you're a dreamer, you could say, well, maybe I am a dreamer. Maybe this isn't the right time. Or no, you could use that as your fuel to say, oh, you think I'm a dreamer? Oh, how cute in your own head. Watch to see what I do. I remember being in high school and we didn't have money and I was really small. It's probably some of the things I'm saying. I was small. I got made fun of. I, didn't, I mean, God, I was, I was under five foot tall going into 10th grade. I was tiny. And I can remember getting made fun of and people picking on me and stuff. And we all have that. It's not poor me. But I remember I found a way to say, wait till you see me. Wait till you see what I do. Now, here's the thing. Do you want to use, hey, look what I can do as the thing that drives you your whole life? No. No, that probably comes from an ego place in some areas at a certain place in, in time in your life. But to get a launching pad? Oh my God, it's the greatest thing in the world because it kicks your ass to say, you, wait till you see what I'm going to do. Also... Here's another unfair advantage of an underdog. You have to be innovative. Most of the time, if you're considering yourself an underdog, you're missing something. You are missing the money to start your business. You are missing the support from a spouse. You are missing the partner with the right second half. You are missing living in the right area. So you have to be innovative. Here's what I know. There is company after company after company in Silicon Valley and around the world right now, and their whole model is to come up with a great idea 
and then go out and raise money to fund it. Now, has it worked? Of course. Does it work? Of course. It's a model that's been around forever. But that seems to be the new trend. People aren't worrying about building cash flow companies that are actually successful. They're worried about building an idea that someone will give them money for. And then once they do that, they have to obey to stockholders. They have to obey to the people who gave them the money. I mean, did you ever try to partner with three people? How about partnering with 3,000 people? Now, listen, is there some, anything wrong with that? That's not my expertise. If you got that dialed in, congratulations. But what about when you're an underdog and don't have money and you have to be innovative and you have to get so good at marketing, so good at sales, so good at creating the product you have that you have to create cash flow. It is the only way you keep the doors open. There's nobody coming to fund your business. There's no one to come bail you out. There's no big company say, oh, you made a mistake. You lost 50 million last year. Then we're going to give you another 50 million, but don't make a mistake this time. No, you don't pay the bills. They shut the doors. You know what that creates? That creates some people to run and scared and take a job or take a life that they hate. Takes other, creates other people into monsters, machines to be innovative, to create the way to sell the product, to create the way to, to build the service, build the online reputation. When no money's allowed, it creates innovation. Where do you think some of the greatest breakthroughs in the history of the world came from? They came from underdogs who had to be innovative because they didn't have the money, they didn't have the funds, they didn't have the knowledge, they didn't have friends even supporting them. So here's what I want you to think about in this podcast today. What if being an underdog was the greatest blessing of your life? What if you started thinking right now, right this moment, is write down why you're an underdog. And then for each one of those things, I want you to flip the story and say, no, that makes me be innovative. That makes me be creative. No, that gives me hunger. No, that sets me apart from everybody else. If you went to school and had the perfect degree and the perfect life and everything fell in your lap, would you really have the hunger you have right now? I mean, as you're watching this, if you're watching a Millionaire Success Habits podcast or listening to this podcast, that means you'd crave more. If everything was just handed to you, if I gave you $100 million today, would you really want that if it took away the spirit, the fight that you have? Listen, some of you might be going through some tough struggles. Some of you just want to get out of the rat race. Some of you just want to feel at peace. I totally get that. But use that as your driving force. Use that as your passion. Use that to plow through all the negativity. Be proud to be an underdog. In fact, if you're not, find ways to convince yourself that you're the underdog and nobody thinks you're going to make it and you don't have the money. Be innovative. Be strong and power through. Show the world what you're made of. I believe in you. There's people in your life that believe in you. And when you're not doubting yourself, when you have the right story, you believe in you. So together, let's do this. That's my message for today. Be proud to be an underdog. And remember, all success does Start right here. Listen, if you like the video, make sure you click subscribe right now so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, click the notification bell so you'll know when the next one goes live. You can always follow us on Instagram, and if you don't already have Millionaire Success Habits, you can grab it for free at deansfreebook.com. Remember, all success starts here.